Hello once again, it's the Sin Residence. Uh, I'm back with you again, and now we're going to get into the real heart of uh, what's gone wrong here in this city. And we're going to be addressing police misconduct, dereliction of duty, falsification of police reports, and failure to uh, gain control over a police officer's family. Uh, it only took three years and thousands of dollars of your tax uh, money to uh, finally get control over them. But before we go into those uh, matters, I'd like to show you we've had a response to our previous videos, and it comes from one Michael J. Hudson. You might be familiar with that name if you drive through Sassoon. You might notice all the re-elect me signs that are prevalent everywhere. It kind of reminds me of uh, downtown Pyongyang or Tiananmen Square, where our dear leaders look down on us and tell us how wonderful things are. Anyway, uh, I was sent a by via uh, email and uh, into my inbox and comment box at YouTube a message from uh, Michael J. Hudson of Hudson Business Networks and the message read as follows quote what is this rat on your neighbor who made you a code enforcement officer maybe you should start taking your medications again seriously go see a doctor you will feel much better okay this seems to be an official response from a city uh, councilman I'm quite puzzled by what he means by rat on your neighbor. I've not ratted on anybody. However, I am a citizen with First Amendment rights, and I also have a right to uh, redress and to air grievances before my government. So uh, the courts already established in the last century a citizen's right to bring grievances and to file complaints. Okay? So uh, perhaps uh, this... Michael J. Hudson needs to go read the U.S. Constitution again before he's re-elected, if he's re-elected. Uh, I've consulted with counsel, and they tell me, quite frankly, this is libel. You can see the document in question here. Here's my inbox and the comment section of YouTube. And uh, coincidentally, the, because he has established a YouTube account, the same remarks were posted at his own YouTube channel account. And they're listed there under recent activities. So it's uh, MJ Hudson HDN's channel. You go there, you'll find the link on the previous uh, videos that I've submitted. So uh, that's uh, from the viewer mail, okay, an official response here. I also have a letter which I've sent him uh, saying that I found this to be uh, libelous, defamatory, and age discriminatory uh, comments made towards me. And I'm informing you now that I'm deeply offended and hurt that a Sassoon City elected official and paid employee could make such a libel statement and conduct himself in his manner. Uh, he has been confronted at the city council meetings and he just sits there in stonewall contemptuous silence. But however, lawyers have told me that this is in fact a libel statement. It was written, okay? It wasn't said, it's in writing. Okay, that makes it uh, pretty hard to, to dispute. Uh, so I've sent out a letter uh, by registered mail, I have a receipt, and it says I demand in writing a full unequivocal written apology with your signature within three weeks of receipt of this letter sent by certified U.S. Postal Mail, and, this, and upon receipt this is informing you under California Civil Code Section 48A, Subsection 2. Okay, enough with the mail for this week, let's go on to the uh, question of police misconduct. This is the moment that you've all been waiting for. Uh, the first item that we want to bring up is the party house on El Prado Lane. I have a rental, party ne a rental property next to me that was occupied by the, two, by the two people, the son and daughter of a state police officer who lives three doors down from me, and his uh, kids were living next door in the rental property. They moved in. Oh, by the way, I kept careful log of all the events that happened. Here's the... The chrono just the chronology right here. And by the way, the district attorney has a copy of this. We went on, I'll show you their business cards later, but we went and spoke with a uh, Miss Carol Burroughs and uh, also uh, Miss uh, 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 the misdemeanor uh, case manager down there. I, heard, I forget her name right now. I'll bring it up later. But anyway, they do have copies of this showing all the major events that happened, all the times the police had to come, all the documentation and all the subsequent actions, with no results, of course. So, uh, uh, to try to uh, cut this down, and for the purposes of brevity, I just want to highlight the major events before we go into the particular uh, evidentiary items here. Uh, on or about the 3rd of January 2005, they moved in. 
On about the 10th of July, I went next door and gave them my name, my phone number, gave them two boxes of young children's books and a child study desk, uh, trying to establish cordial diplomatic relations. On or about the 20th of January 2005, I began to notice people coming and going uh, at all hours of the day and night. My wife and son, uh, who worked swinging a grape shift, also rep reported to me loud parties at night disturbing the peace. Uh, numerous unknown people began gathering outside my home late at night. I was concerned and discussed it with all our neighbors. We agreed to continue to monitor the activity. We found out from one neighbor, uh, he told us he already called in a complaint. So I'm not the only one complaining. In other words, the other neighbors are complaining, and you're going to see their letters, the stack that I have here. Okay, uh, then it starts to get serious. Uh, I noticed that someone had tried to gain entry into our home by uh, flipping open the uh, entry control box outside. No one could account for why it was left open, so we simply removed it as a further uh, security measure. Then on about April the 16th, uh, 2005, while conducting a walk-around inspection of my property, I discovered somebody had used brute force to rip out a uh, drainage uh, gutter downspout and ripped it from the building and threw it halfway across the yard. Okay, this is not some you know, item that was in disrepair and accidentally, no. It was ripped out by the roots and deliberately thrown and I know with interest that it's right on the border of next door. Okay, we filed a police report at that time. And let me see. Uh, the police officer in question, state police officer, assured us that none of the party guests would, would be in any way involved with this. He gave us his word that uh, all was in good order. Okay, now it starts to get even more serious back in 2005. Remember, this ran on for three years with no results, no uh, resolution, no relief from those who are charged with protecting our safety. On or about the April the 23rd at approximately 2 o'clock in the morning, my son returned home from his job working for the city of Sewer Soon, and uh, he found the party guests on our property tugging at the grates and the doors, and uh, they were so inebriated, he overheard their conversation stating that they were too drunk to drive, and they were arguing amongst themselves who was going to be the lucky winner to drive. So this is the kind of activity that we began to realize, and a pattern of conduct that we began to realize was being sponsored next door. Sponsored by who? The a state police officer and also the Sassoon police. They apparently find this to be acceptable conduct. And they know, you'll see later on with all the documentation, letters and photos and videos and all, they knew exactly what pattern of conduct was going on next door. So the, to say that we didn't know, that's not going to fly. The, trail, the paper trail is irrefutable, folks. Okay, let me see. Uh, let's see, May 2005, we were about halfway into our first year. I called a uh, dispatch report loud noise in a party with cars parked up and down the street. After midnight, I noticed that when the weather gets warm, the partying starts. That's when you start getting your drinking and driving and all those fun events, when the weather gets warm, right? Dispatcher says they didn't have enough resources to cover it, so they sent the uh, officer out finally and he gave me an incident report. A piece of paper. That's, you know, their, their version of resolution, right? Nobody's arrested. No drunk drivers are apprehended. We'll just give you a piece of paper, Steve. So, oh, let me see. 21st of June, I come home at about 16.30 and was inside my home when I heard loud shouting and cursing. Stepped in outside, I observed the, the son of the state police officer fighting and screaming with his family outside of the police officer's residence three doors down. Somebody called the Sassoon police, but it wasn't me in that question. When the police arrived, I spoke to the responding officer, officer and asked if all was secure and if the peach was, uh, the peach was breached. And I explained to him that I was concerned about it because of the loud cursing and the fighting, which was so loud I could hear it inside my home, okay? That's uh, not good. Then on about August the 1st, that summer, uh, my uh, neighbor across the street reported to me that he had to call the police at 0500 in the morning when he found a black man pounding on the doors and screaming outside the house next door. By the time police responded, uh, the subject had left the scene. Here's another thing I want to bring up to you folks right now. These people who are living next door were white, okay? They weren't black or Hispanic or Asian. They were white, okay? You understand that? So. My question is to you now, suppose this had been a minority family of blacks or Hispanics. Do you think this would have been and unconnected to the police? Do you think that they would have allowed this to go on and on for three years and waste all these tax uh, resources? Or do you think that they would have quickly resolved the problem? What do you think? 
And remember, these folks were white. They're not minorities, okay? The troublemakers were white. Do you understand that? They were not minorities. They are connected to the police. It went on for three years. Do you think this might have something to do with why this wasn't taken care of and why your money's being arrested? Uh, being uh, wasted by these people? So, let's see. Stepping on, uh, on about 3 January 2006, we've completed the year. Uh, the owner of the property, a Mr. Sundev Singh. Okay, Mr. Sundev Singh is the uh, uh, property owner next door. He was the one that was leasing them out to these no-gooders. I've looked at public records. He's moved out of state and he has tax liens against him. Okay, what's that all about? You know, is this, a, this is the kind of property owner that we want, or irresponsible type that allows this to go on? He says that he's re-entered them into a lease for another year of hell. Okay, on about the 7th of February, uh, partying doesn't stop. Hey, it goes around year-round, right? I discovered, this is disgusting, I discover a large amount of vomit and feces on my driveway. The track of the excrement leads directly into the driveway of next door. In disgust, I take my garden hose and wash it away. 21st of February, I sent a letter to the code enforcement officer in Sassoon City complaining of the Title VIII and, and Title uh, VI infractions. Uh, they come down, and I write all of it up. Uh, the God bless her, uh, the black police officer, Pam Greenberg, she's the best they got. She, she was very effective. She went and had cars towed away, uh, nuisances abated, messes cleaned up, and then she followed up on it. But she's, she's uh, moved on. So we don't have her anymore. Okay, on the 1st of March 2006, uh, I heard a noise outside and an appalling and disgusting spectacle. I discovered two of the guests outside the police officer-sponsored party house engaged in sodomy, anal sex in the driveway. I take a picture of the sodomite, but I have it right here. Let's see, right here, folks. Let me get a, I should have this prepared. I apologize, but it's right, it's right in here. And uh, I took a picture of him, and I called Officer Fong responded. I have his uh, card, too. And he, uh, he yelled at me. He said it was all my fault, and then uh, proceeded to do nothing. Uh, Officer Rowe followed it up. I had to go down there. And interestingly enough, as the uh, subjects fled the scene, the wonderful police officer's family would not identify who the subjects were. They just uh, refused to say, oh, we don't know. Well, we don't know. We're just having a child's birthday party. We don't know. We don't know. So here we go. I finally found it. Uh, you got to remember, I've got a huge stack of documentation. Here's a picture of the two sodomites that the police officer's family refused to identify. I also got a picture of them uh, in the car fleeing the scene. And uh, that, uh, they refused to, to uh, turn over the identity, to disclose the identity of who these people were. So this is the police officer's family doing this? What kind of people are going over there? We're going to find out about that later. Let me take a break and I'll turn the camera back on.